Hey, greetings, citations. Well, today I'm going to start dismantling the kids' bathroom. These cabinets are like all the other cabinets in the house in that they're just, you know, the cheapest available at Home Depot. These are the cabinets that you would buy off the shelf, the unfinished ones, and then these were installed here when the house was built before the tile was in, before the, uh, the, the house was painted, and uh, these were finished in place. I'm not sure what they used, but this house was built in 1999, and there's not a lick of finish left on this wood. It is completely gone all the way down to the raw wood. In fact, the grain is raised. Um, you see here alongside the toilet, there's no, no finish left on the cabinet at all. And this is what uh, the uh, cabinets look like in the uh, master, although they weren't as they weren't as barren as these. They were still pretty pretty uh, threadbare. What I need to do is I need to get in here with a sander and sand the, the face frames. I'll take uh, the drawers, I'll take the hinges off the drawers or the doors and the drawer faces. I'll take the hardware off of that. I'll bring that stuff out to the garage and I'll sand that stuff out there. I got to make some cuts here. I marked them with my vibratory tool. And I got to cut about an eighth of an inch out of this. So I can give myself a gap between the door faces because the uh, offset on these hinges, these I've replaced these hinges with hinges I bought from Home Depot. I have about a sixteenth of an inch off, uh, different offset than the hinges that came with the, the cabinets here, so it pushes the the uh, the center doors that oppose each other. They, they're they're touching in the middle, so I'll just take my tool and I'll cut a little bit of a gap out of there and that'll provide a gap and when this is done hopefully it will look something like this <sighs> something like these As you can see here I had to uh, notch that frame a little bit to push the hinge in a little bit and set the hinge. But seeing how it's uh, 112 degrees outside today, you know, pushing 100 degrees in the garage, let's go check right quick. Oh, it's so dark in here. Let there be light. Uh, oh, 93. I don't think I'll be working on it too much today. I'll get this stuff taken apart, I'll get the hinges off, I'll get everything bagged up, and uh, get ready. That's what I'll do.
intending to finish off with 80 grit on the electric orbital sander. I went down to uh, 220 and sanded that and now I'm on the final sand at 320 grit and after that's done then I can go ahead and refinish the cabinet itself and I'll do the same process with the cabinet doors and the drawer faces. Okay, now all of the sanding's done, now you gotta clean up all this dust so it doesn't end up in the new finish. I'll do that before I actually work on the cabinet faces and drawer faces because uh, I don't want my kids tracking this all through the house. So I'll take care of that real quick. Okay, once you're done sanding, then what I did is just took a damp cloth and I wiped down everything. That will expose any areas where sanding scratches are uh, prevalent and, and uh, uh, moist. You know, don't saturate the wood, obviously, but just with a damp cloth, wipe it down. And that will expose any areas that need to be addressed with further sanding. Once you're satisfied and you've selected your, your finish, then go ahead and start finishing it. Whether you're painting, staining, and then applying urethane, or if you're using a product like the Verithane uh, Polystain. This is what I used in the Master. I put two coats on. And uh, on this particular application, I think I'm going to go with one coat and see how it looks before I decide to do the second coat. But... Um, what I didn't, what I didn't like about this was that when I applied the second coat and I did it on the same day, it seemed like the second coat, um, didn't flow as, uh, it didn't flow as nicely as the first coat did and, uh, the uh, pigment would kind of, uh, concentrate in one area and you'd have to really work it with a brush to get it to flow out. So it got kind of splotchy. But uh, I got better part of uh, half a quart, probably three quarters of a quart than this yet. There's plenty of stain to do this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain the, the base cabinet first before I do anything with the, with the uh, before I do any sanding or anything out in the garage. I just wanna get this done so that uh, the kids don't have to worry about mussing things up. And I can get them the hell out of my bathroom. Let's get started, shall we? One thing I forgot to take off was this toe kick, uh, the cover for the, the toe kick here. And that's just eighth inch plywood, it'll come off pretty easy. But in my case, uh, this was installed and then the tile was cut and, and run up against it. I was always to believe that the tile went up against the, um, the cabinet itself and then the toe kick kind of covered up the joint, but what the hell do I know, I'm just a stupid carpenter. And for this, I am going to use a flat wire. What did I do with it? I gotta go find it. I'll be right back.
Well, there's a lot to critique about this particular upgrade. It's not perfect. There's mistakes in it, but it looks a lot better than it did before. Here's what it looked like when I started this project. And this is what it looks like now. So you be the judge. Is it worth 20 bucks? Because uh, maybe, maybe I got more like 30 bucks into this. Because I did get uh, some new uh, door pulls. I got those uh, on Amazon. If you like those, you want to get yourself some, check the link in the description. So next we're going to paint this uh, room. This is what it looked like when we moved here seven years ago. Maybe a month or two ago, we took the uh, the old light that was in here. It looked more like it belonged in a dressing room on a movie set than in a bathroom. The same thing with the one in the, the master. And uh, we have a guy locally here that uh, buys overstock and sells it out of his garage. He's got this perpetual garage sale. And I picked those up for about uh, 40 bucks a piece. But you can see that uh, there's some aluminum inserts that screw into the drywall that that screwed into. So I got to remove those uh, patch. There's two of them. Uh, patch those holes. Get a can of spray can of texture. Touch those up. Also where the shower rod was mushed against the wall on both sides. That needs to get touched up. And, uh, and then I got uh, some areas there where they did the same thing with towel racks and uh, get those textured and repainted got to uh, patch that little hole where the the little best toy for children ever let me play you the song of my people so anyway uh, those were all dickered and yeah, it smashed the uh, lock, smashed a hole. Just about every wall in the house that has a, a door has got that or worse. So I gotta patch that and then uh, after it's painted, then I'm putting new baseboards on. That'll be, that'll be it for what we're gonna do in here for the time being. So stay tuned for that uh, video that's coming up later. You'll probably see it in a few weeks. But if you like how this turned out, smash that like button, share it with your vast social media network. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? We cover a lot of things here. So click that subscribe button. And if you do, please click the little bell icon that's right next to it. That way YouTube will let you know the next time I upload a video. If you want to support this channel, there's a few ways you can do that. If you shop on Amazon anyway, please consider going through one of the links in the description. If none of the links in the description uh, fit your fancy, just click on one of those links, say, wow, that's nice, and then go to whatever it is you do want. The channel can earn a little bit of a commission. It's just pennies, but every penny counts. And if you want to throw me a bone, there's PayPal. And if you want to support this channel for as little as $3 a month, check out Patreon. If you can afford to do any of those things, I appreciate it, thank you very much. And if you can't afford to do those, don't worry about it. I know what it's like to be broke. It just means we're probably related. So until next time, you have fun. Stay safe, shoot straight, keep it powder dry. Have a splendid day. Don't be afraid to take on a project like this. It's not that difficult. The hardest part is usually just making the decision to do it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.